Hey, welcome. I'm Pastor John Boyacek, and this is Fairview Baptist Church. We're so glad that you could join us for a slice of what Fairview life is all about. We want you to be here and be part of what God is doing in this community. Ever had a close call when your life flashed in front of your eyes? When I was 19 years old, I was part of a construction crew building a church in one week over in Truro, Nova Scotia. I was one of the young guys, and they made us run up and down ladders all the time. And the second day, we were finishing up the roof, and the young guys, they made us carry the, the, the shingles up on top of the roof, the bundles of shingles. So as I'm carrying up shingles on top of the roof, I had to give them to the older guys and go back down the ladder. We're about 25 feet off the ground. And one time I was going on up, I put some shingles down, and this, I stood up and I started talking to some of the shinglers there. And as I was talking, I kind of lost my footing, and it was a steep roof, and I went like this, and I, I, was, I was falling. And as I was falling, one of the guys reached forward and just grabbed me by the scruff of my shirt. He said, hold on, John. And really, he saved my life. If he didn't reach out and grab me, I, I would have fallen to my death. It's one of those times where you just really reflect on what life's all about. Be more cautious in the future. A couple years later, I was with my friend, and we were going off to a conference. We were driving in his car. He was driving. And as we were going down this two-lane highway, there was a slower car in front of us. He decided to go out and, and pass it. As he was passing that car, another car was coming towards us. His car was not that fast. And just as he got past the bumper, he, he cranked his wheel right back into our lane, very much avoiding a head-on collision. If he was a split second uh, less than that, we would, have, we would have been schmucked, would have been killed. And I remember my heart just racing as that happened. I'm thinking, man, you're a crazy driver. And just a second later, my friend pulled over to the side of the road. He goes, my life, just flashed through, my, my life just flashed in front of my eyes here. I thought we were going to all die. It's, it's these things that just cause us to reflect. Reflect on these close calls. Events that happened that could change our life drastically. But they didn't. And, and I must say, because of those events, I'm more cautious on roofs. I'm even cautious as I pass people on the highway. But monumental things that happen to us that may produce a change can also be quickly forgotten. Many war vets who experience the atrocities of war tend to put those out of their minds. They tend not to bring those things up. It's interesting when famous movies like Dieppe or Saving Private Ryan came out, Many, many grandchildren would go see these things and these movies, and after they were done with the movies, they would go talk to their grandparents, and, and their grandfather would say, well, I was there. And they said, you were? You, you, you stormed the beach of Normandy? I said, yeah, I, I was there. And compared to the movie, reality was a lot worse. And you never really heard those stories from the old vets until some of these things came out later in the end, uh, closer to the end of their lives. Because they buried them, they suppressed them, they, they, they did not want to bring them up because they were such horrible events that they had to go through. The mind is powerful and can easily dismiss or ignore certain realities like they never happened. At times we want events put out of our minds, at times we want to embrace events and, and remember them. Today is Easter. It's Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate Christ rising from the tomb. Millions of people around the world celebrate this and, and see it as a reality. But there are also millions of people who don't choose to celebrate this, who don't even see it as a reality. Some people say it didn't happen. Some people said, I, I didn't see it, therefore it isn't true. Some people say the story is made up. And these questions, interesting enough, have been asked since the day it happened, since the day of the resurrection. 
And this morning, I want to look at the reality of the resurrection and show you that from the first day that it happened, people dismissed it as nothing big. But it is big. People dismissed it as nothing big, but it is big. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. And the, the writer Matthew, one of the four who records the story of, of Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. And he makes it quite clear uh, about the story. And the thing that I... There are many things I appreciate about the Bible, but one thing that I appreciate about the Bible is the reality of it. The, the way it doesn't cover the reality of life up. And the story of the resurrection is no exception. And it shows the mess and the reality of life. And so follow along as I read in Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 1. And I'm going to unpack this story as we go. Matthew 28, verse 1, it says, After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. So you have the Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. The Sunday morning, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene, the one who was, had demons cast out of her, and the other Mary, who was the mother of two of the disciples, um, the disciples uh, James and Joseph, said, let's go prepare the body as it's, as it's buried. It, it was prepared in a rush, and, and, and the proper burial procedures did not happen, so they decided to go to the garden to get that done. They would have been there with spices, would have been there in sorrow, would have been there thinking, how are we going to open up this, this tomb? But there are soldiers there that will probably open it for us. And so they went into the tomb. Uh, they, they went to where the tomb was. And as they're going there, this is what happened. It says, there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So here they go walking up into the tomb where, where Jesus was buried. They knew it was because they were there when his, he was buried. And, and there was this violent earthquake, a violent earthquake. Ever been in an earthquake? Well, I, I've been in a very, very mild one. I, I've never been in a violent earthquake. But when it comes to a violent earthquake, think about it. You, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore the shaking. You, you can't ignore the, the, the violence of it. I've been in violent thunderstorms, and, and I, I can think back to the lightning and the, and the thunder and how noisy it was, but it would be nothing in comparison to a violent earthquake. And so the ground shook. Everybody would have known it was happening. They would say, what's going on? Yes, earthquakes are a little bit more uh, abundant over in Israel, but they're not regular. This was not something regular. A violent earthquake was not something regular. And it, oh, and it happened, and the tomb opened. But more than that, an, an angel came down, and his appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And, and the guards were afraid of him, and that they shook and became like dead men. And, and so these, these, these guards... These men who were fearless, who would face death. These, these people who, who knew what violence was all about. These guys who are afraid of nothing, who, who are not afraid of, of, of providing death on people, showing death to people. They're terrified. They're terrified so much that, that they're shaking and they're like dead men because they're so afraid. In verse, verse 5 it says, the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he has said. Come and see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. The angel had to say to these women, hey women, 
don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Typically, when an angel appears, he has to say that first. Don't be afraid. Why? Because it, it was terrifying what they saw, this, this something that they've never seen before, this angel who opened the tomb and was bright like lightning. They were wondering what was going on. But these, these women, they responded well to the angel. And the angel said, no, no, take a look in the tomb. Take a look in the tomb. The tomb is it's open. He's not here. He's risen, just like he said. Go and tell the disciples that he has risen. And these women, their, their attitude of going to the tomb that morning was all about putting spices on a dead body. They, they would have been there with sorrow. They, they, they would have been there with huge grief. And they knew they were just doing this duty because it's the duty that you would do with a dead body. Put spices on it. And this angel appears. And he says, he has risen. It was something that they just did not expect. It, 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 was, it was a shock of all shocks. From, from deep depression and grief to, to overwhelming joy. What an emotional change. What a roller coaster. A number of years ago, I came back from a conference, and I was really tired. And I went home. In fact, it was my birthday that day. And I went home, and, and I just wanted to spend it with my family, with Sandy, and, and just be quiet that day because I was just tired. So I came home, and Sandy said, hey, we're going to have a bit of barbecue. Why don't you throw a couple steaks on the barbecue? So I did that. And, and the phone rang as I was just putting these stakes on, and it was somebody from the church. And they said, hey, John, I can't get into the church. I wonder if you'd just pop over and unlock it. And the church was five minutes away, and I was one of the closest pastors. I said, there's no one else to unlock the church? He said, no. Can you come over and unlock it? And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And I turned to Sandy, and I said, Sandy, i got to go over to the church and unlock it. She goes, why? Come on, it's your birthday. Let's, we're gonna, what, can't someone else do it? And I said, no, I guess not. I'll be back in five minutes. So I took off, and I went to the church, opened up the door. And, and as I put the key in, I, I realized the door wasn't even locked. I was so ticked off. And I opened up the door, and I walked on in. And there were people there, and they all go, surprise! It was, it was my birthday, a surprise birthday. And Sandy showed up with the kids a few minutes later, and she goes, she surprised us, she got us, she got me. And my, my thing was, I, I was not expecting that. I was expecting a quiet time at home, not a big surprise birthday party. And, and these, these women, as they went to the tomb that day, th there was no thing in their mind thinking that Jesus rose from the dead. Or let's steal Jesus' body. Or we have this plan hatched about Jesus and his body. And their plan was specifically just to go and put spice on and prepare the body properly. But it was all changed. Their grief turned to joy. And they were thrilled. And, and so the story goes on. It says, so the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came and, and they clasped his feet and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell the brothers to go to Galilee where they will see me. So they ran away in joy to go tell the others. And as they're running through the garden, Jesus is there. And they see him. And they fall to their, feet, their, their knees and, and they worship him. Not only do they fall to their knees and worship him, they, they clasp his feet. They touch his body, showing that he was truly risen in bodily form. This was not a vision. This was not an apparition. This was not a ghost. This was Jesus in the flesh, and they touched him. And he says, go and tell the other disciples, I'm going to meet them in Galilee. I have risen. 
I've done what I said I was going to do. And, and so they went off and, and they did that. Now it's interesting, what were the guards doing? The guards were terrified because they saw these angels. They, they were terrified of what happened. And, and, and you would think these guards would, would, would do something like respond properly. But instead, they, were, they wanted to dismiss this. Oh, come on, it's not a big deal. Something weird happened. And, and the story goes on. It says, while the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. And when the chief priests had met with the elders and, and devised a plan, plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you're to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while they were asleep. If the report gets back to the governor, governor, we will satisfy him and keep, him, keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. These soldiers, awestruck by this angel, these soldiers who were supposed to stand up to anything, are cowering in fear, terrified. And when everything was all said and done, they decided to go to the superiors, to the authorities, to the people in charge and say, this is what happened. Instead of the authorities and the people in charge saying, wow, I can't believe that happened. Jesus rose from the dead. He said he was going to do that. What, what, what happened? They said, no, don't, don't tell that story. Don't, don't tell that story. Tell this story instead, that you guys fell asleep. And as you fell asleep, the disciples came and stole the body. Put, put that reality out of your mind and tell something else. This is one of the first reports within the Bible of fake news. Fake news is happening here. The authorities wanted to change the story. We've heard of fake news. Why do authorities want to change the story? Because authorities want power. Even with this coronavirus going on, we, we see in the news about China. Instead of telling the truth about where it originated and, and what happened and, and when people were infected, they, they wanted to change the story. They said, no, the Americans brought it. No, it didn't happen at this time. Why, why are they doing that? It's because they, they want a different perception of them. They, they want to control people. They want power. The same thing that's going on here. And, and people delude themselves. When the reality is something totally different, they still delude themselves and think their way is the right way. And these authorities thought that. And other authority figures of the past thought that. Hitler, when, when his army was decimated, and instead of saying, I'm going to surrender, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give up, they said, no, we're going to fight to the very end. When Saddam was... Uh, Hussein was, was uh, invaded and his country was invaded. Instead of surrendering and, and giving himself up, he, he, he fought. He, he, he did it defiantly. And when people are in place of, of authority, they delude themselves. And the same thing was going on here. John writes this 30 years after this happened. Uh, sorry, Matthew writes this a number of years, about 30 years after this happened. And as he writes it, it, there were two stories that were being told. The story of the women and what happened there and the story of the guards. The women, what, what, what did the women have to lose? Well, the women were women. Uh, back then, they, they weren't even seen as witness, credible witnesses. Why would they tell a different story? The women back then really didn't have much of a voice, but they were listened to. The guards, they had a place of authority. The guards were supposed to be people who could be trusted, but they twisted the story. And many years after this, these two stories were going forward, but one had a lot more traction than the other. The story of the women, of, of what they saw, and what they heard, and the story of the Christ rising from the tomb is the real story. Why? Because lives were transformed. The disciples who, 
who, who fled in fear when they saw Jesus just after that. Their, their lives were transformed and they decided to, to live for Jesus and, and tell about his transforming work. Jesus transforms people's lives. The resurrection is real. The resurrection is true. And God is in the business of transforming lives, once again, because of the power of the resurrected. Jesus rising from the tomb. Jesus conquering sin and conquering death and giving us life, meaning, and purpose. And those disciples went on with life, meaning, and purpose and boldly proclaimed it to to people around them. Jesus is in the business of changing lives. Has your life been changed? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Have you realized that he came and and, and died on the cross for you to take your sins away, to take away the bad stuff in your life, to, to give you a relationship with the Holy God? Because the only way to God is through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us, his blood being spilled to take away our sins. And we need to confess our sin to him, ask him for forgiveness. And turn our life over to him and say, Lord Jesus, take my life. It's yours. Here it is. I want to follow after you with it. And he does a transforming work. The reality of the resurrection gives us hope. The reality of the resurrection gives us life. I've seen this. I've experienced this in my life. I've I've experienced a father just recently dying and a brother recently dying and and the grief from that, but the reality of the resurrection gives me hope. I'm going to see them one day again. I've been with people who who were going through marital difficulties, huge difficulties, and the reality of the resurrection has given them hope. They've turned to Jesus and Jesus transformed them. I've seen people who who are struggling with debt and and gambling and and, and other vices, alcohol, drugs, and the reality of the resurrection brought brought transforming power into their lives. That's the thing about Jesus and the power of the resurrection. Hey, you know what? We are a community that loves Jesus. Jesus. And we want you to be part of this. Feel free to give us a call or even drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you.